What's up, people of the internet? My name is Abacab, and we have some new gameplay footage published on a German website. So we're gonna go over that footage in today's video. All right, so the website GameStar published a video narrated in German of some new artifact gameplay. So we're gonna take a look at that gameplay today. And before we do, I just wanted to clarify and sort of warn you that I chopped up the footage a lot because in the video, the guy sort of explains what's going on in sort of extreme detail. So there's parts where he just basically like looks at the item shop and talks for like two minutes. I assume about the about the item shop. I mean, I don't speak German, so I don't know. So the beginning of the video is very chopped up. Trust me, it's a good thing because honest to God, there are parts where he just like talks for like a minute or two minutes. And I don't want you guys to stare at the screen for a minute or two minutes while nothing happens. So um, don't mind the cuts. All right, so we have a mono black deck on our side versus a mono green deck on the enemy side, which is played by a bot. So we have a bunch of improvements in our hand. And um, I think I would probably not play escape route because the nice thing about escape route is it's super, super cheap. So it's not like other investments where you wanna like basically spend all your mana on a turn to invest in the lane so you can start getting value out of it turn after turn after turn. With Escape Route, it's so cheap and so situational that it's okay to just sort of hold on to it and wait until it actually matters. So that play right there kind of makes sense. It's going to give Sorla Khan a kill and hopefully he can start getting in tower damage potentially. Um, Assault Ladders isn't going to do much good and same thing with No Accident. So honestly, it was kind of, a, kind of an okay play. It might make sense to start putting improvements into the third lane because that's sort of the uh, basically the only lane where improvements matter because with the oath there's only one type of card you can cast which is improvements. I'm talking about colored cards of course you can also play items but um, so so with lane three that's going to be the lane where you ideally want to spend your mana on improvements because that's the only thing you can spend your mana on. So he's, he's putting a salt ladder in lane one, which actually not too bad because um, he's unblocked. Sorla Khan is pretty big. Now, what I'd like to see is to start putting a minion or two, at least uh, creep hero something in lane three. So we can start getting value out of uh, out of the oath, because the more things you have in there, the better. I would pick up that ring because why not? And um, God, you guys just skipped about two, two minutes of footage there. So, um, Storm of Spirits can honestly go anywhere. I would expect Abaddon in lane three. So for that reason, I would probably put Storm Spirit in lane three because Abaddon's probably gonna kill Sorla Khan unless you plan on using the ring to save him. I'm not sure if the ring would save him. I have to actually can't tell from the resolution of this video when I'm watching it, it should be higher quality for you guys. But for me, I can't make out Sorla Khan's health from this bird's eye view, but he opts to relate for the middle lane. I guess to sort of counter those creep. I guess that sort of makes sense. We have um, Sister of the Veil in hand. We won't be able to play that this turn. We have no accident. We need to find a good target for the ring. We might be able to put it on Sorla Khan or the mid lane. We have a wolf coming down, but he's dying instantly. I don't know why the bot didn't put that wolf in front of the creep. That seems like kind of the obvious option. I would probably no accident the the, the wolf. I mean, why not? Um, It'll spare three damage on the Wyvern, and yeah, I guess it's, it's not, not too bad of a play. I don't think I would ring here. There's really no reason to. The Road Tell second ring. Yeah, just pass. Get some tower damage in. And here. Uh, okay, so we might want to ring. Um, putting the ring on. Oh, geez. That arrow really sucks with. Uh, with that creep next to Lycan. That's unfortunate. We could Kingfilt Musket, Kingfilt Turret, but the issue is it's not actually gonna kill anything. So the question is, do we wanna put it in a different lane instead? The question answer is maybe we do. We could, we could ring Sorla Khan. Yeah, that, I, I guess that's not necessarily a bad play. It's just that it's not really gonna do anything because the Abaddon's already gonna die. So escape routing out. Mm -hmm. which I guess could make sense if he's planning on abandoning mid lane. Kind of makes sense since the wolf's there, I guess. Okay, so Sorla Khan is going to die. We might want to consider the Reptile Ring. Is Reptile Ring 4 health? 
Because if we can get uh, the Sorlacon to survive, that would be fantastic. And I, I don't really know about this. Uh, Kingfolk Musket does not seem very good, to be honest. Kingfolk Turret, I mean. Just two damage isn't a lot. It's not enough to kill Creep. Steam Cannon, I'm noticing, is, is way, way better. I mean, obviously, it's better because it's more powerful. But still, it's just... I think I, I, think I overestimated the power of Kingfolk Turret. King, yeah, Kingfolk Turret. It's just a... Uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, it got a kill there, actually. So, maybe I'm talking out of my ass. <laughs> it's just I feel like I'd probably rather put Steam Cannon in there. So, we can get an, an Assassin's Hood, which might be useful in killing this Magnus in the first lane. That's a route that we wanted to go. We don't need Demagicking Maul, necessarily, because there are no improvements on the board. Um... All right, so we opted for the card draw. Okay, they have two heroes coming in. My guess is they're probably gonna put one mid and one on the right lane. Though, what the enemy player might actually wanna do is just not focus on the mid lane and just let the mid lane push itself. Because it's already got a creep there, the wolf's gonna keep getting bigger, there just might not be much of it. Yeah, okay. So the black player, the player playing black, I should say, uh, decided to abandon the mid lane. Yeah, I think that was a smart call. So the, <laughs> the bot completely overinvested in the mid lane, which is good for us because that gives us an advantage in the other lanes. All right, we don't want to mana drain because they had initiative, so they got the most value out of that. We could move the wyvern over so that we don't waste the hit. Oh yeah, okay, we definitely want to move the wyvern over. We'll move the wyvern over to the right so we can get tower damage in and we can, and we can avoid her, him dying. Um, and then if we wanted to, we could put Sister of the Veil to the right. I mean, I, I guess that works too. You could do Sister of the Veil first, maybe to see if he plays anything else, and then teleport him over. But I would definitely teleport him over. Because between the Cleave and the Retaliate, this Winter Wyvern is going down, and we don't want that. Now the question is, is it better to... Is it better to move, redirect the Assassin to kill the Creep? Or is it better to have the assassin hit the tower? And that's a decision that I don't know the answer to because I think that requires a bit more experience. With black, I think the answer is to go for the tower because black wants fast tower damage. Um, and since we don't have any gold doubling items in this deck, I believe, like payday, we don't really care too much about the one gold from the, from the creep. So I think keeping the assassin facing forward is probably the smart call. And that tower is super threatened. And in this lane, there's nothing we can do, which is just fine because we don't care about this lane. We abandon it. It's going to take him two full turns just to kill this tower. And he's got two heroes invested in here, which is great for us. Uh, unfortunately for us, one of them is Dark Seer, so we can start moving them out at his at his leisure, but only one at a time. And um, I don't know why he moved over. What was that? A melee creep? I would have moved over either the wolf or the tree and protector. Because why why do we care about a melee creep, man? A melee creep's not gonna do much. So personally I'd probably move over the uh the hero, the tree and protector. Leave the wolf to keep smacking on the tower, wait for him to get bigger while he's nice and safe, and then and then move him over once uh once he's powerful, <laughs> once he's super huge. So we could assassin's hood, but there's no real need to. We could Keenfolk turret, but there's no need to. That would just lose an initiative, so we just pass. And now we've got the new item that I haven't gone over in a video yet. Okay, so we have a cloak. Yes, yeah, grab the cloak, I would say. Blink dagger. Oh, I wish we could afford it, but we can't. So, since we have initiative in lane one, I think it's... Oh, let's, first let's talk about hero deployment. I'm thinking just one in the left lane, one in the right lane. Probably, um, if you're gonna put Sorla Khan anywhere, I'd probably put him in the right lane just because she's most likely to get in fort damage over there. Though you could put both of them in the left lane because the right lane is looking pretty strong right now. Um, honestly, just don't put him in mid. That's the big thing. Putting him in mid will be completely pointless. I mean, if you're gonna put one left and one right. I don't really see the reason of putting Sorlacon left and Storm Spirit right. It seems 
logical to me to put to do the reverse of that because that maximizes the chances that Sorlacon's gonna hit the tower, which is what you always want with Sorlacon. Okay, so since we have initiative, it might be a good call right off the bat to um, mana drain because that's going to limit the mana on the enemy side pretty thoroughly, which is going to give us a decent starting advantage. It might screw up his turn. I'm trying to think, is there anything in six mana in green that green really wants to cast? Six mana. Um, nothing off the top of my head. See, it might not have even made a, diff made a difference. They have a four drop anyways. So, is there anything we can do to save this Winter Wyvern? We could put either one of these items on it, which would save him, which would be fantastic. We definitely want that. Um, you could slay it, I guess, but is there a better slay target? Uh, not really. Not, not, not exactly. I mean, you could hold on to slay under the logic that they might play a Thunderhide pack or a Thunderhide alpha. I think... Personally, I would probably hold on to the Slay if it were me, just because green is so good at putting out big creep. And you don't really need the Slay. The Cloak will do the same job. Um, however, would Slay plus Assault Ladders destroy the tower? No, it wouldn't. So yeah, I think I would probably just um, put a Cloak on him. And then you could develop the Raven Hook, maybe to the left. Oh, well, I can't see what's going on right now. If you... Play the cloak that leaves you all your mana, and then you can play the Raven Hook to the left of the Magnus, which could potentially re it has a 25% chance of redirecting towards him, which would be fantastic for you, and give you some gold, destroy one of his items. So that's, I think that's probably the best play, playing the Raven Hook plus the cloak. But it's too late for that now. This player did not see eye to eye with my strategy. Uh, you could Assault Ladder. Honestly, the, there's not really too much of concern. Like, you could Assault Ladder this lane, Assault Ladder the right lane. The, like, he's in such a strong position. He's doing so well. He's honestly kind of kicking ass. So I'd be surprised if he lost this one. Just, um, yeah, it doesn't matter what you do at this point. I think here I'd probably pass. There's just not much reason to do anything else. Yeah, you got the tower. There's no need to invest anything else in this lane anymore. We got the tower. And here, God, they still haven't killed this tower. <laughs> Why would you play a wolf in this lane? <laughs> I don't know what, the, what this guy's doing. This bot is making some awkward plays. It's complete overinvestment in this lane. Complete overinvestment. I don't agree with that play, with that play at all. You could have put the uh, wolf here in front of Debbie, which would have been a much more effective play. And uh, for now, we just just pass I guess you could put a cloak on something if you're worried about you know surprise damage but does green have any surprise damage not that I not that I can think of so I think he would have been better off just holding on to initiative there's really no need to play that cloak um that doesn't really change anything so yeah I would just pass I would have I would have passed. I would not have played that cloak. That cloak didn't help him in the slightest. Uh, Green's not going to do any surprise damage, so Debbie wasn't in danger. Um, fortunately, he got initiative back. Yeah. Okay. So, no harm, no foul, I guess. And then we have. Honestly, I think this is the last turn of the game, so I think I would buy one of these items, even though we don't really need them, just because. I think the I think the game is probably going to end in this turn, so we may as well give ourselves every little advantage we possibly can. I think I'd have to check the if I would have to hit the view board again, but yeah, I think we're probably going to win this turn. No heroes coming out. Everyone survived. Look at that mid lane. It's so overstacked. It's completely overstacked. So. At this point, I would very seriously consider, well, I was about to say I would very seriously consider just passing in lane one, passing in lane two, just to hold the advantage in lane three. But now that we got ball lightning, we should 100% ball lightning one of those heroes from lane one over to lane three. Um, 
I think I would probably move the Winter Wyvern because we don't need Sorlacon's massive damage and Winter Wyvern's ability is up. So that'll give you maximum options because really you don't have to hit the tower for much. So Sorlacon would be excessive. So I would just teleport. Um, I would ball lightning Winter Wyvern over to lane three to ensure that we win lane three and leave Sorlacon here, I believe. And then just do nothing else, pass. Yeah. You could, um. Yeah, that's it. There's, there's really nothing else to do. Just, uh, yeah, send him over. Yes, that is the right play. I agree, 100%. Let's do it. So he's going to slowly zort on over. And, God, this tower is in so much danger right now. So much danger. Ball Lightning seems like a such better version of Cover of Night. Cover of Night does almost the exact same thing as Ball Lightning for 7 mana. But Ball Lightning is, what, three? I just don't understand why Cover of Night needs to be so expensive when you already have Ball Lightning. Of course, to get Ball Lightning, you have to play um, Storm Spirit. So there is one downside. It's fine, man. This lane doesn't matter. I think I forgot to edit this part out and, and trim it to make it faster. Because this is a, a rough idea of what I was talking about. So yeah, man. We're doing fine. We don't care about this lane. I don't know why exactly we're, we're, sp we're spending cards on a lane that we don't care about anymore, that we've already won, that the opponent has no chance of taking. Why why play cards on it, man? What's the point? I don't get it. All right, so we've moved the assassin so we can smack that tower damage. Yeah, really, I think the best play would have been just passing as much as possible to try and get turn advantage. I mean, initiative. Try and get initiative. That's all we care about is lane four. I mean, lane three with the four heroes. Lane three is the only thing that matters at this point and of course lane three is so powerful like there's such a strong position in lane three i don't really see anything going badly for us i mean how could it dark seer should 100 percent send someone over either the wolf or the tree and protector but he's gotta he's gotta send over one of those things he sends over the wolf not a bad play necessarily against Black, I'd be pretty worried though about um, my one hero dying instantly, which would result in me not being able to play any cards. So I think I would probably rather send over the Treant Protector to give myself a little bit of flexibility. Like for example, um, well, I guess he, he doesn't have Coup de Grace, he doesn't have Assassinate. Can you gank someone in the same lane? I can't remember. And yeah, at this point, just. Uh, pass we have lions passive but at this point i think i would probably well he could play damage immunity stuff so i guess it would make sense to play it now you could wait to see what the guy plays or you could play it now under the concern that he might play out a damage immunity thing uh like divine purpose which would suck really hard so I would play the Finger of Death on the creep that's blocking Debbie because Debbie does the most damage. And you could actually teleport Winter Wyvern over to the right of Debbie as well to double up on your damage redundancy to absolutely ensure that you survive or that you kill the tower. So anyways, that's the match. Uh, pretty good game. Um, the bot made some really dumb plays, really dumb. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Dabacab out.